Hello contractors and welcome back to Successful Small Service Contracting. Thanks for tuning in today. I really appreciate it. Before we get started, let's uh, please subscribe and ring the bell so as I continue to get my helpful videos as they come out. And I really appreciate that. So let's talk about hiring subcontractors today. So why would you? As a single operator contractor, as you start to develop your business reputation and your marketing starts to pay off, you'll find that in many cases you can capitalize on jobs that come your way that are either too big for you to handle or you know comfortably or you find yourself turning work away because you're already very busy. This is where the single operator contractor starts to make some crazy money. The contractor method of single operator service and contracting operation already helps you earn by far better than the average Joe as it stands. You can certainly operate without using, uh, uh, utilizing subcontractors and, and do very well, but hiring subs to take the work you would turn down for various reasons is the icing on the cake. In my 30 plus year career, I've developed a system for hiring the best of the best subcontractors and this concept alone has netted me a very comfortable living without killing my body as a single operator. You're still physically working your service or repair jobs every day, but as your reputation grows and your marketing brings in more than you can do comfortably yourself and or as your clients ask you who you know that can help them do other work that you don't do, and as a contractorpreneur, they will, I promise. By using my methods, you're able to choose the jobs for yourself that is the work you love to do and pay the best and subcontract the rest of to your vetted and trusted subs that have less knowledge and talent in marketing. You see, they need your referrals and are glad to get the work to help support their families and you reap the benefits along with them financially. Contractpreneurship is good for everyone involved. One of the biggest comments you'll get is, how can he do so well for such a small business? I highly recommend staying away from regular employees. There are plenty of people that will work with you on a subcontractor level and are glad to do it that way in both labor only and trade skill situations. Now as respectfully as I can get and still get this point across, employees are a pain in the ass and they cause the greatest amount of stress to the business owner than any other issue there is. With quality subcontractors, when the work is there, you work them. When the work is not there, you don't. It's that simple. Hands down, this is the best way to run your business for low stress and maximum profitability. Now, sure, you're going to have less control, but in the long run and with the right subs, you'll be glad you went this way. The trick is finding the right ones. And really, it's just a matter of paying attention to the applicants that apply and vetting their information. This is critical. In the contractpreneur business model, You'll use subcontractors in many areas that may not come to mind right away. Not only, not only will you be searching for, hiring, and utilizing subcontractors in the field, you're also going to need help from other subcontractors that you don't necessarily think of as subs. For example, your accountant. He's a sub. Answering service, printer, auto mechanic, mailing house, and even uh, the person that occasionally helps do office work is one of your subcontractors. So again, one of the pivotal areas of the contractpreneur business model is using these type of workers to help you get the work done without having to have standard employees and the headaches and financial drain that goes with them. You hire only as needed. It's an art to find and learn how to hire in this way, but I find it very easy to do and I love the outcome of my business. It is critical to use the PDF form and the forms module to interview them. It's very thorough and helps answer the questions you need to know and to see if you can hire them or not. Most of the interviews will be by phone until you decide only a few to choose from. Uh, <clears throat> then buy them coffee to talk together for about 30 minutes to try to get to know them. I usually do this early in the morning. You're able to see if they fit physically. Are they very sloppy in their appearance? Do they communicate well? Do they listen well? Do they have modern communication skills with their smartphone? Do they have a smartphone? That's very important. Are they clean in their appearance? Now one of the things I check is the appearance and the condition of the vehicle they pulled up in. I'm not talking about you know, new or shiny, you know, that doesn't really matter. But is it maintained? Is the interior full of junk or fast food bags? 
Uh, does it have muddy tires and paint that appears that it hasn't been washed or cleaned for a long time? This speaks tons about someone without a word being spoken. It would be hard to trust someone to keep a neat and orderly job for you if they are sloppy persons themselves. Remember, as a contractorpreneur, you're different from the other contractors and as neat and clean as possible is extremely important. Now, a word of clarity here. Trust your instincts. If something doesn't seem right or the information the sub gives you can't be proven, just move on. Trust your gut. Ideally, what you're looking for is four to six people you can call on with short notice most of the time. Many times that's all the notice you get and your client may just go to the next guy if you can't get there soon. In skilled trades, you would most times have a larger time window to schedule the job, but with labor only, you generally need to get there and get it done now, like you know, in emergency work and stuff like that. And this is a generalization, generalization, but you get it. Run Craigslist for your area. Be very subsips. <clears throat> this is a generalization. <laughs> Thank God for editing. This is a generalization, but you get it. Run Craigslist ads for your area. Be very specific in your ad as to what you're looking for. For example, plumbing contractor in Buffalo looking for general laborers for part-time waterline replacements. Must live in or near Buffalo and have dependable transportation. Experience is helpful. Please reply to general contractor. This is a generalization, but you get it. Run Craigslist ads for your area. Be very specific in your ad as to what you're looking for. For example, plumbing contractor in Buffalo looking for general laborers for part-time water replacements. Must live in or near, very near, Buffalo and have dependable transportation. Experience is helpful. Please reply to plumbingcontractor at bats.com. I highly recommend to never use your main phone number or main email that you use in your marketing and communications with your existing clients. I personally use alternate voicemails and emails to accomplish this. You want to be able to always control the phone that your existing and new clients call on. That way you know with at least some certainty that the main, that the main phone is ringing. That way at least with some certainty. Oh my God. That way you know at least with some certainty that the main phone is ringing with your client calls from your advertising and marketing. You know, the money calls. You'll get a lot of phone calls from these subcontractor wanted ads and obviously the people responding are looking for work. Now if you found the people you're looking for, cancel the ad and let the people know that you've already hired. You know, it's just the right thing to do. Treat people how you want to be treated. In the past, I personally have left the same ad in but added in red I can't get back to everyone personally as the ad created many inquiries. I've now hired the people I need. Thanks for responses and time. Now run that ad for a couple of days and then cancel it. The next time you run ads you'll get a great response rate because you showed those people that you're a caring person. Now let's talk about skilled labor. When your business requires people with professional skills other than your own, run the same ads above again tweak them a little bit to apply to this this sort of uh, these the skilled trades. Again, be very specific as to your needs and what the position entails. For example, a skilled labor position in a, a handyman business you may be running could be a fence installer. Now, you may have the skills to install that fence, but do you have all of the equipment and labor base to get it done quickly and professionally and still have time for your other work? Probably not. Run your ads and interview low to medium overhead subcontractors. Low to medium overhead contractors may work from their home and their equipment may not be as shiny, but the right one gets the job done on time and for the price quoted. Of course, a lower price than you quoted it for, of course. Your subs must understand these are your jobs and your client cannot talk price or additional work with them. 
Sure, they should be nice, communicative, and helpful, but never talk money or additional work. Tell your subcontractor to tell the client they will contact you to let you know of their question and request for more work. If a subcontractor cannot follow this simple rule, they, they can't work for you, period. A sub cannot solicit work from your clients. For the right sub, you're going to go, you are going to be a constant source of work for them. Subs that understand this are gold to you and you to them. Something else to consider when hiring subcontractors, how busy are they? You can find a great, great sub, but if he's so busy you can't get to your work in a reasonable amount of time, you had not found the right one yet. In general, a subcontractor is a subcontractor because while they're very good at performing the work or should be, he or she isn't as good at business and marketing or is unwilling to do what it takes in all the areas that need attention in a business. Again, he or she is good at performing the work, but not necessarily getting the work, dealing with clients, or answering the phones, and that list goes on and on, as you well know. Find subs that need your skills and want to have a good working relationship with you. Now let's talk about paying the subcontractors. Well, there are certainly exceptions to the rules. In general, you don't want to pay your subcontractors until you've inspected the job and ensure that you and your client are happy with the work. I've always required my subs to bill me by Friday and they will be paid by the next Friday. Subs that can't live with that, then I can't deal with them. Because this gives me time to look at the job and to collect from the client. Always, always, always inspect the jobs. This keeps the subs on their toes. It keeps the quality control up. You know, it's, it's just human nature to slide a little if you think no one's keeping up with you, you know. Comment to your subs about the jobs after you've inspected them, whether it be praise or constructive criticism. This lets, this lets them know that you were there. Let them know when the client is happy and when they are not. As you find the perfect subcontractor, be sure to treat them like the goal they are by always paying on time with no excuses. Make their pay like clockwork. Even if you're having trouble getting paid from the client for some reason. Keep this in mind also. Subcontractors are not always human. Humans, for example, <clears throat> keep this in mind also, subcontractors are not always humans. For example, a window washing company may occasionally need to hire a lift to get hired to hire windows. Um, an HVAC contractor may need to hire a crane company to occasionally lift AC units on the rooftops. Maybe a plumbing company may need to rent a backhoe to dig trenches. Um, a painter may need to rent a sandblasting rig to clean a job up before painting. You get it. You get it. Also, always rent your equipment needed if you'll be doing the jobs that require equipment. It rarely makes sense to own large expensive equipment. Rent the equipment even if you need it often. If your business requires large equipment, negotiate a rental agreement with a reputable local equipment rental company that includes the maintenance and other upkeep like tires and tracks and trailers, you know, truck to haul them if that applies. Let the rental company take the risk and overhead of that. That's their business model. That's what they do. Most of the contractor bankruptcies of 2008 to 2010 economic downturn was due to high overhead of equipment, supporting vehicles, and the employees that operate them. So to summarize, hiring the correct subcontractor is an art and never perfected, but once practiced, this is one of the best profit centers in your contract for successful small service contracting business. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for tuning into my channel. I really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and ring the bell. Let me know how I can help you in any way I can, and I'll see you next time. Take care.